Good morning, folks. I wouldn't say we have a calm star on our hands, but the activity being produced right now is not yet threatening our planet. Coming to space weather news, we find solar flaring remains very low, so let's take a look at the sunspots. The departing groups and those on the north have no mixing whatsoever. That big grouping down south appears to retain its delta-class magnetism where blue and red collide there, but it is fading fast. That active region down there has produced a number of small CMEs, but none appear to be Earth-directed. Nothing big coming, and nothing big has hit. The solar wind remains very calm, and Earth's magnetic field is having a nice little weekend vacation. We have planetary geometry this week, and coronal holes coming up north. We will have a minor quake watch because of it, but another major event in tsunami is unlikely as the polar field strength, the red, is disappearing over the last few days after peaking during that one-day quake uptick we had late last week. Speaking of such things, you all remember our paper with Dr. Holloman and Dr. Uyen, Yen, self-published on Space Weather News on August 3rd, and I asked for your help spreading the word. Less than one week later, New Concepts and Global Tectonics asked us to submit to them, and while it received its peer review, the Chile disaster happened, and as many of you know, we analyzed that one similarly. Just yesterday, I received the preprints of both papers to be published October 5th in the next issue of NCGT, the foundational paper plus the confirmation of the methodology used in that foundational study for the Chile quake. That reproducible result is vital to better understanding how the sun is triggering these disasters. Until October 5th, the only thing I have to offer you is our press release announcing the two papers. You can find it through spaceweathernews.com homepage, and it is linked for you below. Our old page where we had self-published the paper now just has the citations for the two new ones. It will be updated when that journal is published. Now, on to the supermoon eclipse. It's a full moon in perfect alignment for the eclipse, but also within one hour of the moon's closest approach to Earth, which is going to make it look huge. Tonight's visual splendor will be a great sight for dates, families, or just remembering why you stare up at night. Zooming in on the West Pacific Earth spot, this typhoon will soon strike Taiwan and China. Moving on to Hawaii, where direct landfall won't happen, but the storm effects likely will. We also have a system developing south of Mexico that is ready to charge north, but so is a system that is just now developing in the Gulf of Mexico. I think we're going to have to have eyes on this one, folks. The featured content today is yesterday's episode of Fly on the Wall. We discussed the galactic flares and potential effects on our solar system, along with the major California winter warning. I'd also love you to check out the press release linked below, and the topic of solar-triggered quakes will of course be part of multiple talks at Observing the Frontier. Time is running out to get your tickets, hotel rooms at the venue are already gone, but there's plenty more nearby. October 17th in Pittsburgh, come spend a weekend with us and observe the frontier. The conditions today will be pressure-based. Yellow to white is high, purple to red is low. Watch how they spin. All highs spin out clockwise in the north and spin out counterclockwise in the south. All lows suck in counterclockwise in the north and suck in clockwise on the south. This is the most fundamental thing to learn if you want to be your own weatherman, especially when you realize that the precipitable water must go where the pressure tells it to. We also have shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.